how to be a good job seeker in 21st century. Uh, this is the main subject, which uh, what we will what we will be talking about. Because I have only one screen, so I will not see a chat. I will not see almost nothing. Any of your reactions? I will just staring in the glowing monitor. So in case there will be some questions, something you have to unmute yourself and speak loud because it will be very difficult for me. Or I will ask Eva if she can uh, read it for me. Sure, I will. <laughs> okay. Uh, in this this workshop is somehow divided uh, to the three sections. First, we will talk in general how uh, what does it mean to be a job seeker or uh, like tips for job seeking. Then uh, we will talk about CVs briefly, uh, cover letters uh, about inter preparation for interview, and then if you will have time, I'm almost 99.2 percent positive that we will have a time, we will talk about LinkedIn. So if you will have a question during uh, the presentation anytime, just speak out immediately or wait. I think I have there like three uh, places where we can catch up uh, with the questions. Uh, but if you will have a question, it's always better to ask because yeah, you know, questions are super important, but we will talk about it uh, during the presentation. So maybe you will be motivated then later. So if you are talking about uh, job seeking in the 21st century, what's the difference in uh, in the 21st century than the previous ones? And in, to be honest, there is not so much difference. If you want to be successful, it will be the same as before. Uh, it, in 21st century, we are uh, we are just getting more lazy. So it seems to be more difficult because we are more lazy because we have these modern tools like internet, uh, these job job boards all around like Job CZ and others, where we can just click send our CV and we don't have to really you know take care much. But it's not but it usually doesn't work. With you guys, it's slightly different than like with general population because you are technicians or engineers or uh, I don't know civil engineering, machinery, and so on and so on. So uh, with you, it's much more easy. You are more you are like hunted prey for recruiters, but maybe uh, you it might be interesting for you. So if you are talking about job seeking, it's uh, let's we we supposed to have a look on it like it's the process process which has three stages. One stage number one is to find out who you are and what you want, what you can offer. Just figure out uh, what you will seek for, which positions, which companies might be interesting for you. Then, if you have some idea, you have to go on the market. You have to seek for the job and try to get it and when when you will get it when you engaged then when you will get an offer on the table usually the uh, f fresh graduates or like in the early early uh, stage in career whenever you will get the contract you you are happy and said yeah i will sign it perfect great but later in your career and even now it's when you get a, uh, an offer on the table there is a time to step back and think about this offer very carefully and negotiate. Because, you know, it might be a great offer, a great company, great project, but the money is not so good. And you will be happy about this position for a year, year and a half, and then you will struggle. Because, you know, we all need to eat, everything getting more and more expensive. Maybe you will one day thinking about mortgage or family or something like that. And then the money might be a big issue. It's easy to change. Uh, this is also important to know what's like new in the 21st century is that uh, you will probably change your positions more times than your parents did. Much more times. Uh, so let's go through the process step by step. First, there are like questions which you need to have an answers. First, it's uh, about your skills. So what you are bringing to the market, what you know, what you can do, how you can do, what's, which skills you like and which skills you don't like or which you have and which you don't have. 
So there is uh, the questions which you uh, should answer. You should have the answers probably because it's the questions about the product which you know the best on the planet. No one knows you that well as you know yourself. Even your mom doesn't know you so well. So um, you should be able to answer that. So first, skills, what you are bringing to the market. Second, work environment, what, in which environment you would like to work. Doesn't, uh, like locations, how far you want to travel to work. Do you want to, you know, just wake up in the morning, go to the office next doors and enjoy or sit at home all the time in, in home office, or you want to travel around the world. Then, uh, which company you would like to small startup dynamic or like like huge corporation something like that much more stable but also sometimes difficult to make some changes do you want to travel do you want to travel by car by plane do you want to sit in on open space or you want to have your secret super uh, protected space which is called your office or you want to sit uh, in at your home uh, would you like to work as a specialist stand alone master of disaster who everyone has to approach uh, very carefully to not make him angry because he's important or you want to be a part of big team national one national team or international team this you can think because it also will somehow help you to decide which uh, job trajectory you might choose. And then one which not so many people think about is salary. And you should know how much money you would like to earn before you will start seeking for the job. Because you m might like working in NGO somewhere in Africa, but you also would like to have a, I don't know, five figure salary in check rounds. And this will really not work that much. So how much money you would like to earn? How much money you would like to ask? This is good to know in, a, in advance. And it's not for, for the position which you are applying, but mainly for your vision. How much money you would like to earn now? How much money you would like to earn in five years? How much money you would like to earn as a dream? and how much money you need to survive. Because you would need to have this huge figure where you dream to, where you walk towards. And you're uh, supposed to know the figure, what's the minimum, bare minimum to survive. So uh, a co uh, combination of your uh, monthly expenses plus some savings that you will be able to save at least in a year, this security deposit money. Do you know how much money you're supposed to have in, in liquid banking account so you can easily reach them, how much money you should have there? As a security in case of something. Like two months at least? Mm -hmm. Two or three months. Two or three months. It's a, a recommendation is three months, but it doesn't have to be three months salary, but three months expenses at least, plus something extra. Because, you know, I know people who have salary uh, 160,000 check rounds and their monthly expenses is 25K. So it would have absolutely make no sense to keep, I don't know, half a million check rounds on the uh, liquid account, just losing money sitting there. Uh, but three three months expenses. Why three months? Because uh, like the uh, median for uh, finding the job, uh, how how long it takes to find the job? It's approximately one hundred one hundred eighty hours. So to find a job is a project for one hundred eighty hours. Czech Republic is a little bit slightly not slightly. It's different than the rest of the world. Why? We have the most strange labor market ever. Lowest uh, unemployment rate, lowest unemployment rate for fresh graduates. It's crazy. 
I don't know how the, the Czech Technical University, uh, how low the unemployment rate for fresh graduates you have. I guess it will be the same like Czech University of Life Sciences, even better. And we have 1.2% uh, of our fresh graduates are unemployed, which is absolutely almost nothing compared to Spain, 36, compared to Turkish, no, Turkey, no, Turkish, Turkey, it's all over 30% as well. So it doesn't take so long, especially for engineer, but you never know what the uh, future can bring and one, uh, 180 hours approximately it takes, which is, if you divide it for, I don't know, seven hours working a day, approximately three months. And there are also some waiting periods. So those are the questions that you're supposed to uh, find answers. How, how you can do it? One easy uh, way is to find a career coach. I think you have a career coaching in your, um, in your university. Or yeah, find some tests. <laughs> yeah. And find some tests and make some tests, you know, because tests will always give you an answers. Or do they? So you can take this approach, which might be costly. And if it's not costly for you, it is, it's costly for the university. So, but it can help, no doubt. Uh, I always believe that because you, this question concerns you, so you should be able to find out the answers because you are uh, you pursuing a university degree, so you should be smart and smart people should be able to reflect themselves. So I'm calling just, Take a couple nights, night reflections, open beer, wine, whiskey, whatever you like, tea maybe, and just sit uh, in your apartment or flat or room and drink, drink this and think. Try to think about these uh, questions and I guarantee it will give you some sleepless nights, but perhaps you will uh, find out. Where else, uh, what else can help you? Uh, to find out what you can do is try to create your CV because uh, your CV is your past. So there you can uh, you will write your uh, past successes and it can also show you where you are heading to, uh, what you can do, what you can offer or uh, create your elevator pitch. Do you know what elevator pitch is? Or have you ever heard this elevator pitch? It's quite popular right now. No, oh, past 15 years. It's like you should be able to present yourself in, I don't know, 30 seconds or something. Like and quickly say who you are and what you can do. Exactly, exactly. Uh, you can, the name comes from idea that you are an employee of one big, huge company somewhere in, uh, in Manhattan. And you have an idea, billion dollars idea, which you need to present to your boss. And you don't know how to do it, but you have an idea. You are waiting on him in lobby. Then you will see him enter. He enter his uh, the elevator because he's going to his office, which is somewhere in the top of the skyscraper. So you run through the lobby, jump with, uh, with him in the elevator, and you have this time in the elevator to present your idea that he will listen you farther. Uh, and through this, like this version, which I'm, I would like to present you, which is very important if you will somehow make your elevator pitch and you will know how to use it, it will, be, it will benefit you for the rest of your life, is how to present yourself, introduce yourself in 30 seconds that the other side will know about you enough to decide if you are worth the conversation or not. You know? And best way how to do it, just three segments or two could be, a couple, sentence, uh, couple sentences, who am I? what I can do and what I want. For example, you are in career fair. You have on your university career fair. You can also go to Czech University, university of Chemistry on their career fair. You can visit the company. You can say, hi, I am, I will use myself. So I'm Shemek. I'm studying, oh, I'm not studying anymore. No, I'm Shemek. I'm working for career services of uh, our university. And we are constantly uh, and we uh, now we constantly seeking for new partners, new companies who can somehow help our students to shape their future career. 
are you up to? And it's it's easy open because when I'm meeting someone new, they don't know me. And if I will just try to ask some questions, it's difficult for them because they need to put the focus from all the surroundings on me and think about me and try. And so I need to help them to focus on me. And to, to focus, they need to know the purpose or something. They need, their brain needs some information to grab, grab on. So uh, when you will use it, for example, on this career fair, you can say, hey, I'm a student, I'm uh, studying this and this and this. I don't know what you can study. Dynamic of fluids, let's say. And I'm seeking, uh, I would like to, uh, no, I'm now I'm in process of deciding my thesis, which I would like to write on this. And I'm seeking a company with, uh, with who, I'm, who I can work in on my thesis with. And you can use whatsoever to achieve your goals. And one more thing, when you will think about yourself, uh, trying to figure out, there are this in this uh, orange box, uh, it, they are called employability skills. You can, they have many different names and they come in different versions. Uh, this is employability skills uh, named by University of Oxford, but you can also call them soft skills. You can call them uh, skills for 21st century and so on and so on and so on. And those skills are for companies super important. Uh, because when uh, we asked companies, I'm not sure if I have this slide. No, I don't have this slide here. Uh, we asked companies with a uh, check, what is it? Uh, check, oh, it's, uh, it's, um, no, it's Technical University of Strava. Yeah. So we uh, ask companies what they are seeking or what with which uh, skills are important for them, uh, which they are seeking with the fresh graduates. And we add there this like our special sentence trick besides those um, like hard knowledge and what companies told us that besides the hard knowledge they are for important for them uh, is ability to learn and the sentence the sentence is how they describe it they seek for humble people who are willing to learn who don't think they are masters of everything but who knows their place and willing to learn and grow. Second was self-awareness, which is more or less connected. Third was activity and proactivity. Fourth was uh, curiosity. Fifth, teamwork, communication, and so on and so on, nada, nada, nada. So those skills are super important. And when you talk to, to uh, companies there and you ask them, so what's for you important? They said, yeah, at least the basic skills. Of course, when we are seeking for accountant, we need basic knowledge of accounting. I don't need super professional accounter because I have them already. We, some, we search someone new who will be able to obtain those skills, uh, in, uh, not in the far future, but very fast. We will teach those skills, but we need these soft skills because they are very difficult to teach. You will not teach someone to be active who is inherently lazy, like me, for example. So those skills are also super important and you should think about them also very much and how to present them. And we will talk about CV, I will give you some tips, but maybe I will not give you some tips, depends. If you will ask, you will, might get tips. So this is step number one, answer questions to know who you are and what you want. Then, where you can seek. You can, there are many possibilities where you can find the jobs. The most common is go to job portals, job CZ, Pratas, as a hot jobs, whatsoever. There are five billions of them on the market. Recently, jobs, job CZ and Profesia merged together. If you haven't noticed, I think it's one, one month or two months old information. Uh, many companies have their own web page. Big, big, uh, bigger company, more sophisticated career page. Uh, you can smaller company, not so sophisticated career page. It's also slightly changing, but when you have a company of five people, something like very narrow, very professional, they will not bother to open a career page, something like that, or 
they will not update it. Then newspapers and magazines, probably not, not in Metro in your case, but if you will go to library and you will open some uh, papers or uh, magazines which is dedicated to your profession, you might find there something. You can go to recruit, uh, recruitment agency or temporary staffing agency. Do you know what's the difference between two of them? What's the difference be between recruiting or recruiter agency and temporary staffing agency? So I will tell you. Recruitment agency, uh, they are seeking job market on behalf of some employers. The reason why they are doing it, because employers doesn't have uh, people or they it's, it's for them difficult to seek, the, uh, to seek the market and so on and so on. So if you will go to recruitment agency, they will review your CV, they will test your skills and then they will send you to uh, your future employer. And if you will hire, if you will be hired, the recruitment agency will get a reward, which is somewhere between two to five of your salaries. Temporary staffing agency, uh, it's in Czech, it's agenturní zaměstnanec. So it's uh, very often connected with this low level uh, and uh, low skills workers who are doing this stupid, stupid, uh, stupid boring, uh, repeatable jobs. But not anymore. You can work. The temporary staffing is super popular uh, in between uh, IT guys. You know, they are working on small projects. They are uh, paid by this recruit, this agency, and agency then charge the employer the huge bucks. So, and now you can uh, be temporary staff as engineer, HR, yes almost every kind of job. It's very good because you can easily find a job which is like short term. It's the project which is limited on some time. Uh, you will get your your money, you will, go, you will get everything. It's easy because you have one point of contact. So the company knows you and they will send you and sell you to different projects. And if you will start your project with Škoda Auto, maybe in during this project in 10 months, you will get to know the uh, core workers and you will get hired in Škoda directly. What's the problem with the temporary staffing that your contract could be terminated anytime? If you are a worker and they want to kick you out, it it's legally quite difficult if you are not stupid and you don't drink at work. And, and if you drink at work, you don't do you um, if you drink at work, you don't do anything stupid, then you are almost unclickable out from the company, or it's very difficult. If you are with temporary staffing agency, simply next day, you don't have to come if you are not needed. So your work can be terminated very fast, which might be not so secure, but it's also for young people, great thing. You can go to the, this national labor office, which is super cool. Not anymore, but it was super cool. Uh, Labor office, I wouldn't really recommend, but there is a trick. If you will in some in need to find a job, you uh, have you can visit the labor office, and they will uh, in Czech it's úřad práce, and they will help you to find a job, which probably not really, but you can go through some uh, trainings with them, and they can pay you a lot. But not not, a, not so much, but I think it's sixty thousand per head per two or three years. So if you will be unemployed and you will go to labor office, you can go through specific courses. I don't know. You can make a massage course, for example, if you want to make your girl happy. Uh, you can go uh, for a, a bunch of courses which you can go, and they will pay it for you which is good because you will improve your skills, you will imp improve your knowledge and someone will pay for you. So if if you will have your gaps in between uh, different uh, jobs, it's good to think about it. Then fairs, networking events whatsoever, super mega important when you are active and actively search and present yourself on the market. We will talk about it later. And friends and family, because, you know, 
I don't know how you feel about your family visits. You know, there is this Christmas celebration, family gathering, so many aunties, uncles, cousins, and so on and so on. Five billion questions about your private life and so on. And I didn't really enjoy it as a student and I'm not enjoying it still. But I'm using my friends and family and family especially to sharpen my uh, my speeches. So if I want to train my elevator pitch, I'm trying to tell to them because there are billions of questions, especially when you are a student. And when you will work and what kind, what's what you are studying exactly and what you might do with this degree and so on and so on. So you can tell them what is your dream, where you would like to work. And it, you can tell it to them all the time, you know, every year or several times a year. And it might stick in their heads because companies have referral programs. So they are asking their employees, hey, we are searching someone on, I don't know, non-destructive testing. There will be an opening. Could you ask in between your friends and if you will recommend us someone We will hire him uh, and that person will stay with us. You will be rewarded as an employee for this recommendation. So your friends and family can recommend you to the specific jobs if they will know what you are searching for. And if you will just tell them, ah, maybe like this or maybe like that, they will not know what to recommend you to. But if you will exactly tell them what you are up to, and you will be able to explain them that they will understand, they might you know, make this connection. So this is basically where to seek. Ah, here, here I have it, this employability skills. I have it in my hand. Oh. Hmm. To that subject, uh, why I have it here? Ah, I know. When, when I talked before about this uh, employability skills, in the United States, they have something which is called career readiness skills or career ready skills. And I think this is a table from 2022 uh, when they ask employers how they rate students in these specific skills, fresh graduates, and how students feel about themselves, like safe grading. And I, uh, I love this which is called professionalism, you know, huge gap leadership, huge gap that the young people think about themselves quite high in this uh, part, but the reality then shows that they are not so cool and so good and so prepared. It's just uh, like funny information. So, yeah, it's cool. And it's not only in Czech Republic employer, employers complain, but it's in biggest labor market, actually. Okay. So far, any questions? No. I always ask students when we are, we are in person, if you have questions, I'm asking, do you have any questions? Then I'm look at them. I said, if you don't have, just not on me. So try to show me. I don't see it, but maybe. So no We're questions. We're just waiting for the next section. Ah, okay. Yeah, I wanted to catch breath, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so next section. Uh, What's so when you uh, how you can search job? You can somehow very passive uh, passively send your CVs and you can wait, as I said, uh, and you can wait if you will be chosen by someone. Which in your field, probably I don't know your backgrounds, but I think it's happening. You can also uh, be hunted. As I also mentioned, so if you will have your uh, online present somehow nicely put, uh, you could be hunted. Or you can also uh, try to, you know, be active and ask for the job. But to be hunted or to be invited when you're sending just your CV, you have to think about yourself. You have to be able to describe yourself. 
usually, uh, not usually, but uh, often I'm, I'm meeting the like not young students, but students who don't really know what they want to do. There is always a question, oh, I don't really know, maybe I can do this or this or that or that. And when they are applying for the jobs, you know, they're making this uh, atomic bomb, they are sending CVs on different positions, they don't know why, just trying, maybe something will work. And their CV and their online present is presence is not really understandable. Uh, if I go through LinkedIn, uh, in headline, many students have their, I'm a student or I'm a student of Czech University of Life Sciences, or I'm a student of Czech Technical University, who has, who uh, out of you have a LinkedIn and has there in this headline, I'm a student of uh, CTO. It's CTO? Yeah. CTU. CTU. And what does it say about you? Nothing. In your uh, LinkedIn profile, in your CV, and in your speeches like this, elevator pages, uh, and so on and so on, you should have a shape. Young people tend to be blurred, you know, they have, they can do this on that, they, uh, they are open. But be open is cool, but think about yourself as a puzzle. And if recruiters are searching someone in the company, they're never searching someone best or blurred. They are searching for specific shape. And if you are blurred, that you are uncertain or you can do this or that or that or that, then, you know, first they will try out those sharp ones it, if it's if they will work. And if not, then the blurred one. So if you want to somehow raise your chances, try to, uh, try to describe yourself more in shape. So I think very much passes help you to uh, shape yourself. Some specific skills or experiences or no, conferences or whatsoever some any additional information which goes to one direction that someone who is reading this or following you can find a threat or team or subject of your life working life and you can have many of them you can have team like this team like that team like that or it could be a team of leadership team of specialist team of whatsoever but it's good to be, you know, to have this uh, presence that people, when they will look at you, they can very fastly know what they can expect from you. And this is what I uh, try to also mention with this elevator, elevator pitch. But it goes through all of this, um, like, personal branding uh, things. Okay, so this is it. And now we will talk about how it works, this recruitment process. Yeah, so there is a question, who in the company is no, who is the source of that company needs to seek someone new? Who has the idea? We need to hire someone. What do you think? Like the team leader of, you know, some team in the company? Exactly. Uh, team leader or head of department or a manager depends on also on the size of company. It's usually your future boss has a need that your future boss go to HR and ask them, hey, I need this and this and this uh, role to fill. Will you help me? And human uh, resources go, yeah, sure. They go through the pool of candidates. They will search somewhere, uh, ask recruitment, recruitment agencies, go through LinkedIn, go everywhere to find some candidates, some pool. If we are talking in like general positions, like assistants or something, they collected like 30 to 80 of CVs. When we, when we are talking about like engineer with German, they can collect like two and one of them will not speak German. Probably. So uh, they will collect this out of this pool. They will try to call them to select them. Then so I'll, let's say I will go with this line with many of CVs. Uh, then they will ch uh, choose this one CV or like four or five pre-select go to the decision maker. He will invite those people and then he will decide if uh, he will hire one or no one. 
And if you are sending your CV, you are just ending up in the pool of candidates. As an engineer, you have this uh, like bonus that there will not be so uh, such a huge competition. But it might be that your CV is very poorly written. So human resources, they can just, you know, remove you from it because you are not fit. Even though you are, you just simply have the wrong CV. So this process takes time and it's a bit boring and you can't, you don't have it in your hands and you rely on one thing and it's your CV, which is very bad idea actually. It's just a piece of paper. So whether you can wait because you are okay with that and uh, as a like engineer or technical uh, for technical positions it's very easy right now it might change like this uh but still you you will not you are not the master of your fate so but how you can be master of your fate simple you will just use this tool my first phone yes it means that i am a bit older uh and you can call someone you can actively seek for a job you can active and you are not seeking for the job but you are then seeking for your future boss a mentor someone who will see a potential with you and you can try to get the job how to do it you take your take your phone find the companies where you would like to work you go through LinkedIn uh, and there you can find your even future boss. So you, let's say, you want to work in this specific department for this specific company. So just find if there is a leader or a manager of this department. Oh, there is. Click. Connection. I can actively write him. Hey, dear Mr. Leader, team leader, I am student, this, 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 elevator pitch. And I would like to ask if there would be an opening. You know, I always want to work in this field. I don't have real experiences. So maybe some internship for two months or something, even shorter. I think two weeks would do the fine to just see how it works or something and be active. Sometimes they will not reply, but sometimes they will do. So and so why this way to be active? Why it's uh, good? Because uh, I showed you this uh, skills which employers seek and some people trying to write them in their CV, like describe personality, I'm active, I'm good team leader, I am good com in communication skills, nada, nada, nada. But those soft skills, the problem with them is that you can write about them. You can read about how good someone is communicating, but if I will write, I will read that someone thinks that he knows how to communicate. The, my my most favorite is flexibility. I am flexible. I said, hmm, yeah, flexible. So show me some acrobatic tricks, please. It doesn't mean nothing. Those skills must be shown. You know, you have to live them. So. When someone uh, writes me in CV that he is or she is active and she's just sending CV through system and the CV is not really like tailored for my position, then I said, active, come on, yeah, no. But if someone would call me and write me on LinkedIn and ask me actively to uh, if there is an opening or if there would be a job and possibility for internship or some project or cooperation on thesis, I said, oh, fuck me, this is the, i probably supposed to not help. <laughs> uh, this is the person who I want to work with. This is the active person, proactive person. This person then will do me a gro uh, good deal in my job, in my team. So this is the way how you should engage. And where in conferences, fairs, or through LinkedIn, or just try to collect uh business card with numbers linkedin is very good there are many personal numbers and you can call them i love the call uh, the call the most why because it's still anonymous so they don't see me i don't see them and my number not a big deal and it's very fast because then i have i can make many calls during the day so and it doesn't really take much of my energy 
than you know face-to-face uh, visits. So if you will decide to go with call or like visit the career fair or whatsoever, it's always good to be prepared for anything. How to prepare yourself to be active? Just make a call script or uh, or script, just a script. What you will do uh, if you are more introvert, uh, then it will be easy for you. If you are more extrovert, then you will think that you don't need it, and then you will you are screwed. So it's always good if you are not trained salesman to make a script. So write down sentence by sentence what you can tell them and always have it in front of you close that you can read it. So hello, my name is my elevator pitch. I want this or something, something, something. When uh, this I recommend when you are you found a position somewhere in uh, job advertisement and you find a position which is so cool you always wanted to, uh, to work on i don't know uh, in airport let's say and there is the opening and in something what you can do and you would really like to work there as many people probably because it's connected with some benefits so how you can make sure that you will you might be chosen for this position you can send your CV and wait, and you can go to casino as well with this. Or you can prepare your call and you can actively ask for that job. So you will make the script, you will call, and then you will ask questions. And here, why questions is uh, so important? No, because what does it mean if I'm asking questions to someone? It shows uh, it has three benefits at minimum. Benefit number one, if I am asking questions to someone, I am telling him, I am interested in you. I want to know about you. So I'm showing them my interest. Second, uh, if I'm asking questions, I can get answers. And if I get answers, I collect information which not everyone has. Because if everyone could find them, why I would ask stupid questions, right? And third, I'm showing that I'm curious. Wasn't the curiosity number four of most needed skills? And what's curiosity, basically? It's the ability to ask good questions. So those three benefits at minimum. So. I'm showing, I'm showing that I'm interested. Second, I might get their answers and find out something what not so many people know and also prove them, hey, I have the skills, come on, I might be a good catch for you. And so if you are asking for a position you know, which you would like to work, work with, you know, there is this what they want, what they seek, what they offer, and so and so and so. They are usually like three years of experience and some uh, crap like that. So it's good to call and ask them, hey, I found this position online and I, I really like it, but, you know, I can send my CV and wait, uh, but, you know, I don't want to bother and waste your time and waste my time as well. So do I, I have some questions. Do you have time for it? Sometimes they will tell you yes, sometimes they will tell you no. And I said, yeah, okay. So I went through this, what you seek for, well, what is needed, what's your requirements. And there are so many things. I would like to know what's the most important of those requirements. Or you have there two years of experience. What does it mean? What I, what I need to know or how I can prove that I have these two years of skills. So what's the most important thing for you? You will ask for prioritization, which is good because other people, they, they might pick one out of five requirements and they think what is important, what does it mean? But you will ask, you will know, then you can, they will tell you what is important to them. And then you can just say, oh, really, this is the important thing. Hmm. By accident, I work in the lab with this professor on this project, which is exactly this thing which you want. 
but only for two, uh, two or three months. So, and you need two years. And I said, oh, you work with this professor. Cool. Three months. That's cool. That's, you have more, more experiences than most of our employees then. So, and they will hire right away. Why? Because you ask and you got an information which they didn't share like that, but it was important and you just offered them find solution for them. Like, hey, you are searching this. Oh, I have this. But you don't, this important thing, never lie in this. Because if you will lie, you might get a job, but in three months you will be out. So uh, this is how you can engage, how you can show yourself and how you can fight for the position which you like. Uh, maybe you'll find out that you don't like it so far uh, when you will uh, do it. But I often hear in this point like, okay, but if I will call there, who will give me an answer? They, why are they supposed to talk with me? It's true. Why are they supposed to talk with you? I don't know. Why? Why not? You never know. But well, I, uh, I bet if you will find the courage and call, most probably they will try to reject you. Like, Oh, send us your CV and we will then call you later. Or, I don't have time right now, contact HR, something like that. This bullshit. Usually people doing that. Why? Because I, our brain works like that. Our brain is focused. They have this one uh, stream of information. And uh, when there is disturbance, they our brain wants this disturbance to push away and your call is disturbance. But you can help the brain to refocus on you, but it takes time. So this, this you can achieve through persistency. Like, hey, uh, uh, so send us your CV and we will then contact you later. And you said, yeah, 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 I, I want to send it. But first I would like to know something, you know, to not waste I think you just got muted or I don't hear anything. How this happened? Thank you. Uh, so what was the last thing you called? I think you ended up, you just need to tell them and then you muted yourself. Uh-huh. Okay. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm too passionate about this. <laughs> So uh, you, you just have to tell them, like, hey, uh, I'm, I'm here and I don't want to waste your time. So give me a chance. You give them a chance to reconsider their refusing. And it works like that. Uh, every single salesman will tell you that the first rejection, it's simply ignored. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't exist. They, have, they just jump back and ask again. Because this is important. And even the chimps are persistent, more persistent than humans. You know, every single chimp or average chimp, uh, if they are trying to figure something out, they will try it at least three times to find out if it works or not. Every human will just think about the situation and then they will, uh, they will say, yeah, it will not work. It doesn't work like that. Or it's impossible, which is cool that our brains can do it but there isn't the worst embarrassment when there is someone appears someone new who doesn't know that it's impossible and will do it so uh, the persistence is also quite important if you want to achieve and climb and make a good project because you will be refused many times and it's okay and you also refused many things in your life but the persistency can help you to reduce this refusal. And sometimes your idea is simply stupid. So yeah, you will be refused three times and then it's even a chimp will give up. But sometimes just this first refusal, many people give up so fast, which is also not good. So questions, uh, smart selling and persistency. This is how you can get the job. And it doesn't matter if you are doing it in a career fair, if you are doing it in the call, if you are doing it through LinkedIn, just try to do it differently and try to achieve something, meeting, information, something, something, something. Any questions so far? Yeah. Hmm. 
No. Okay. I have just a simple question about the about this presentation. Will you give it to us, or uh, um, yeah, will you send us this presentation afterwards? Yeah, but if, if someone will change the logo because I think it's the old logo which I'm forbidden to use, <laughs> I'm rebel. Yeah, no, we can send it to you. Yeah, sure. Eva, it's your responsibility to force me to get this presentation from me. Cool. It's a hard question uh, and hard hard task. Uh, I think we can try, but uh, this will be recorded or this is recorded, so we can uh, just post it on our socials, and you can see it again. And yeah, my comments and uh, I I will send well, one email to Premek, one email, and if he doesn't send it to me, I give up. Sorry, it's Christmas. <laughs> okay, one email, guys. It's Christmas. It, one email doesn't work with me uh, even during the summertime. So, but I'll try. <laughs> but you will never, you never know. So, okay, uh, let's talk about CVs. We will, uh, you know, uh, we will go uh, through it briefly because CVs are the most boring stuff ever. You know why? So, what's the CV actually? What's the Purpose of CV. Why you have it? Uh, to get a job, to get an interview, blah, 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 blah. For me, ha have you ever received these leaflets from Kaufland, Lidl, and whatsoever? Probably yes. Or if not you, your grandma, for sure. So uh, the CV and these leaflets from Kaufland is has the same purpose. To get you, now the leaflet is to get your grandma to the to the mall, and that because she she's going to buy sugar in discount, but she will end up to spend their uh, uh, big big bucks for everything. CV, the purpose of CV is to to get you an interview. CV will not get your job supposed to get you an interview and with this we should think about our CV and how, this is the way how we should create it so uh, and it's then pretty easy but when if you will somehow uh, you what I would wish to you you will never need to have CV it's good to have it but that you will not have, you will not have a need to use it on the purpose to get the interview, because if you will be active and you will follow the instruction and discussion what we talked before, you will never need your CV because you will be directly invited for, for interview. So you are there already. So it, and you won. You don't need CV. CV is just like supporting material for you, handout, but not the main purpose to get you an interview if you will be active. And for this as a supporting material, it doesn't have to be good. Or main purpose it has to be very good so if you talk briefly about uh, cv there is not so much there's not so many things to, uh, to talk cv should be short and very clear max two pages if it's longer of course if you have some working experience many 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 then three four pages somehow okay but the important period for your cv is the past five years everything what was before of five years and more you probably will not remember or know. So it's just a history. It. Now, then in your use, uh, your CV, try to make it absolutely dumb proof. Use a bold italic underline that the recruiter will go through your CV in this 30 seconds, 90 seconds, and they will find what they are searching for. And they are searching for, for keywords, specific words, combination of words, which catch their attention and then they will review your CV more deeply. You know that many times your CV is now reviewed by computer. There is a robot which is searching for specific keywords and if you simply don't have that keyword or if you have a misspell there, you will not be uh, resent to a human. There is a trick, you know, somewhere in the bottom of your document, right there, every single keyword which you come across in your field, in different fields and something like that, then make it white, you know, white uh, 
white letters on the white paper looks very nice and then you pr then print it uh, as a PDF. Human will not see it, but the robot will do. So then robot will never be your enemy. So uh, just make this CV very brief. What I recommend when you make when you will make your CV, just hand it to your friends and ask them what they will find there in 30 seconds or what they think about that person. Don't, you know, it's not so cool to know, I would change this line and change this things or that things, graphics and so, it's not so important. Important is that if they in 30 seconds, what they are able to tell about the CV, who you are, which skills you have. And uh, yesterday I heard the presentation, what is what you supposed to know, what is this big don't uh, in your CV. The number one was, what's its most disturbing, is misspells and mistakes. So check it out very carefully, always ask someone to check it out for you. A word is not enough, grammarly as well not. Then second, what was disturbing, was too long CVs, so uh, two pages recommended. Then too many informations and too too long compact texts. They recommend bullet points, but it's debatable because I think some someone could be pissed off with five thousand bullet points. And you no, know, and if it's if it uh, contains not really relevant information. Write, uh, name your CV somehow cool and you are good to go. So CV is not so super important. Here is the in check. It's good that you don't. Uh, this CV was made by someone. And here you can see this uh, common mistakes, right? Uh, misspells, uh, different fonts. Here and here and here, but basically it shows which uh, like parts your CV is supposed to have. Uh, your name and contact information, uh, your education. As a fresh graduate, your education is way more important than your working skills. After five years, your education will be forbidden and it will be just one line that you have a degree. But you can use it in your favor. Uh, so. You can describe what you what you are studying, which university, which field, which uh, sub subjects you had at school. Like st uh, try to not na name them as they were, but try to pick some random uh, and at least one supposed to be somehow related to job which you would like to get, and then you can bold it. Your thesis could be a great opening to any company if your thesis subject is good or uh, relevant. Uh, any Erasmus, also employees, employers love Erasmus, international experiences. Why? Because it shows, it tells a lot about your skills. Yeah? Conferences, some, anything extra what you did. Then working experiences, it doesn't have to be, you don't need to have uh, amazing experiences. Your student, come on. But to have at least two weeks experience on in the field. Why? Because if I'm ask, uh, if I will ask companies what they are most afraid with the fresh graduates, they will tell me three things. Thing number one, they are too romantic. They uh, have I idea about the job and it's like too romantic view. And we have uh, so every single job has some boring parts or bullshit, let's say, and uh, something is cool, but. Every, every job has some boring routine parts and they need to know that you are aware of this boring stuff. So even two weeks internship in relevant or related position and will show them that you might be aware and not too romantic about. Second, they are afraid that uh, They are afraid that students or fresh graduates are unable to wake up every day at 6 a.m. That they are 
this was this professionalism and there are also a huge gap. Professionalism and work ethic means that I will come at work every day as ordered. I will not dispute, I will not debate. If I will want to have to change it, I will ask for change. And uh, this they want to see. So they want to see that you worked even in this stupid position everywhere, like maybe in the bar or something, but you worked there constantly two months through the summer, which will show them that you probably worked there and absolutely um, like exercises for them is that you work for the same position or same company two summers in a row. It means that you've been so good that they hired you or that some of, some, some of your relatives working there. Uh, so this, they like the third one that it's not so exciting for you, this job. This is also their fear because they know if you are excited about the job, uh, about the field or something, that you will be a little bit cheaper than someone who is not so excited about. And first year enough reward for you will be like, good job, buddy. So uh, these three things. So things number one, we will show that you had any relevant experiences. Problem number two is solved and you have any experiences. And problem number three, if you have something extra, you know, conferences, your thesis and something else, your hobbies could be related to that. But what companies also love the most, any experiences like in, in the students group and so on and so on and so on. Language skills are also important and hobbies. I recommend if you write hobbies there, uh, give it, still have enough time. Uh, don't just name the hobbies like I like traveling, reading, cooking and eating. It's bullshit of bullshit. You can use it in your favor if you will pick one which you are really super cool about it and you will write a sentence or two about it. For example, I like Star Wars. Um, Mostly I, I like reading books and comics and I have at home, I don't know, 2.3 meters of reading materials uh, of Star Wars. And I have this and this and this amount of collectibles. It's cool and people will like it. Maybe. Uh, how these hobbies can help me? Number one. My boss might also like the same thing, so we will affiliate more, so we will like each other more from the beginning. Or they can just they are they can use it for check me out. Because if they will ask me about something what I really like, and I will start talking about it. If I will start talking about Star Wars, you will see my eyes will uh, be full of sparks, and you will see that I will be super motivated to talk about you. For example, about new Andor TV series and how I'm curious about Bad Batch, which will come uh, in a couple of days, and so on, and so on, and so on. And if I had the similar spark in my eye when I talked about position, which I'm applying for, they know that I will be a good guy working just for a good job, buddy. So it's also a uh, like reason why to have it there. So this is basically CV, and what's also recommended this is really good to make to use these lines to divide the different parts. Why? Because with this, recruiters can focus more. Without these lines, their eyes goes like this; they are lost. With these lines, they are going like so they can uh, dive deeply in your CV more. So it's about the CV cover letter. Cover letter or motivation letter, motivation dopes. It's not a big deal. Uh, I problem with cover letters is that not almost no one read them, but always you need to send them. There are two uh, different things: motivation letter and cover letter. Motivation letter, when you are specifically asked to put down your motivation, so then you will write the document, a nice story. I think half of the page is enough. 
uh, about why you are motivated. But it applies the same logic as a cover letter. So when you are asked specifically to send it, you will send it specifically. If you are not asked specifically, you are sending your CV in with some in some sort of post, mail, something. So there you can write your cover letter. Four or five sentences, nothing crazy or difficult, but it can help you because some, sometimes people, people might read it. So always, to whom you are sending the letter, dear Mrs., dear Mr., uh, and so on. Then subject, where you are writing. I'm writing, uh, I'm sending you my CV to apply for the position where uh, blah, 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 blah. Or I'm writing you because I would really like to work with your company, but so I want to ask if there might be an opening for me. And then body, three, four sentences, why they should hire you. It's not, also not so big deal. So why they should hire you? Uh, I am a student of the uh, Czech Technical University, focusing on, uh, I don't know, the dynamic of fluids in, I don't know, no idea. Uh, I, uh, my thesis is on this and this and this subject, and I have, uh, I had a small internship for three months for this company in this position. Uh, I've also spent six months uh, in Erasmus, I don't know where, and I would I would really uh, like to work for the, uh, the get I would like to get a chance to for this position. Nothing difficult. You will just tell the truth and your contacts. Uh, cover letter. Why it's also so important? If you don't feel somehow so entitled to call someone, as we talked before, uh, motivation or cover letter you can use as psychological warfare. warfare. How? In this letter, you can write, uh, dear Marek, blah, 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 everything what I told. So in Thursday, I will try to call you, on Thursday, I will try to call you and ask more questions about the position. You will send it and you will probably not get a re response or if there will be a response, no one will mention that you Tell them that you will call. What does it mean? You tell them that you will call. You assume that they read their post in detail. So if they don't want you to call, they would respond, Dear Samek, thank you for your email. We will add you to the, uh, uh, the recruitment process and to your inquiry that you will call, please don't because we don't respond. If they would write it, then I know that I should not call. But if they didn't, didn't write that, but I can assume, hmm, in every kindergarten, we've been told and we, we learned that silence is agreement, right? Machinia Sohas. That's true. So if they are silent about it, it means that they want you to call. They invited you to call. So it's the first stage of warfare. And in your brain, you feel invited. So, and you warn them, they could tell you, don't do it. They didn't, so you can do it. They gave you permission. Stage two, if you will call someone who don't really accept, uh, expect your call and you will start with, hello, I am Senek and uh, I've sent you an email on Monday and I wrote you that I will call. You know, I am picking the email, uh, the the phone call, someone telling me that I received an email and we had scheduled call, which I'm absolutely not aware of. Panic that I forgot something. I don't know who is calling, director of uh, or president of United States or someone, no name. We had scheduled call and I have no idea. So they will more likely listen to you. When their brain starts working after a couple of seconds, they will find out who you are and why you are calling. Said, ah, and in that moment, because of this shame that they forget and that with this panic which you created in their head, they were more likely to listen to you and answer your questions. So psychological warfare stage two. So this is good. So cover letter, they're boring, difficult to write, but you can use them so well because it can give you permission to call actually. And it can give you this nice panic in their head. So you will be a puppet master. Ha ha ha. So this is the bonus uh, and the importance of, of cover letters and interview. Interview, 
It's very difficult to talk about interviews because every interview looks, looks different. Every HR is different, but some t- trips, t- uh, tips what you can do in advance to prepare yourself. Super important is homework. If you are invited for interview, check the company, not only company pages, what they are doing or something, but really Google them. Try to find who you might work with. Uh, Google the person or LinkedIn to the person with who you will uh, have interview. Find out maybe he studied the same program as you did. As you do. Come on. This homework could be important. So find about the company what's possible to find. Again, don't waste there what you can find in one hour, let's say. Then be on time. If you are not on time because you are delayed, let them know. Take your phone, send a message. Hello, I will be like two minutes late. Send. Even when you know that you will be on time, like very sharp, punctual on time. The meeting is at 12. You will be there at 12, right? And that you will be two minutes late. You never know. And it's better to let them know than be as who has, who has no work, work ethic. If you will be late long, longer, you know, there is a jumper uh, in front of the train and you are still in Brno. Then you can just tell them, hey, I'm on the, my way to interview you, which you have scheduled on this and this and this and this time. I am somewhere in traffic, something, something. I might not uh, make it on time. My estimation is like two hours delay. Oh, shall I come or will we reschedule a day? Let them know. It's not so difficult. And these things happen. And handshake. You know, it's easy. Just ask friends and train handshake that your handshake is not, you know, that fish. And also that your handshake is not uh, old drunk miner. Uh, dress code. Check out how the company is there. Uh, you are visiting. They are usually dressed. On pictures, you can find a lot. And try to uh, dress up accordingly. You know, if you are going to apply for a lawyer position, the most relaxed lawyer has just uh, untied one button. This is the super relaxed lawyer. So you, then you have to be sharp. If you are going for, you know, some easygoing startup, you can go easygoing plus a little bit, little bit less easygoing. It's always good to be the same level or a little bit higher, but not over the top. Then take notes. People love when you take notes. You will look smarter. If you are not used to taking notes, just buy a notebook day before, open it somewhere in the middle, make it a little bit used, and write there something, information about your meeting. And you can just open it, check, because you made preparation at home, you write down the questions which you supposed to, which you could ask, mm-hmm. and you will not forget, you also write in your note, you will look much more smarter. A little bit of lie never really, you know, damage you. Uh, and have a questions about questions we talked already. And it's not about ha- have a billions of questions, but have one or two smart questions. Questions about the position, the question about the role, the question about whatsoever, whatsoever. I think uh, we have in uh, our web page somewhere there are uh, possible questions which you can ask. There is handout somewhere. It's cc.cz2.cz somewhere there. You can find it. I don't know. It's quite old, and there will be new web. And I'm not sure if we will copy it there. So it's act fast and follow up after interview. When the interview ends, ask for a business card or write down the name of the persons you talked with. When you are at home, find them on LinkedIn. Befriend them. Uh, befriend with them. Or if you have email, just send an email. Dear Mr. or Mrs. or if you start with the first name basis, thank you for today's meeting. It was very like pleasure and interesting. Thank you for all of my uh, for uh, answers on my questions. I'm looking forward to continue. Just like that, follow up email. Just thank them for the opportunity to meet them. Just. No, almost no one's do, uh, doing that, and you will be again one of the someone's. And that's all. And we have 13 minutes for LinkedIn. That's really cool.
Any questions? I have one question about the picture and the CV. I recently uh, got new information that it's not um, pro appropriate anymore to put the picture there, like a picture of myself. And I think uh, it's fine, but you know, I don't know. So what's your opinion about it? I just say, if you like yourself, put the picture. It's not so important. Some recruiters likes it. I know uh, some stories. You know, if the girls has picture there, then boys will invite her because they want to have a have a look on chick. But I also know that the about guy who has very nice picture and he's been hired because he has shitty CV but good picture and girls from HR want to see him and he won. So uh, I think the picture is not needed. But it's appreciated. It's nice to put the face to the name for someone. For someone, it's not needed. Very difficult. If you will ask 10 HRs, you will get probably 10 different answers. My opinion is that it's not important. If you want to have it and you like your picture, do it. If you don't want because you don't like your picture for some reason, don't do it. It's not a problem. Can I add something? Can I... Yeah. <laughs> uh, our cooperating uh, agency did some survey about this, and uh, the result was that most of HR people were uh, for the picture and CV in Czech Republic. So most of them uh, are. Uh, happy when they see picture and they connect, uh, they can connect picture with uh, your CV and with information. And it can help you uh, because uh, if you choose professional, good, formal picture, uh, it adds you some some points, you know, some uh, you can show that you can you are able to uh, have a formal professional picture because a lot of people use pictures from parties from uh, holidays or something and that of course is not good but if you apply for a job in uh, outside of Czech Republic uh, especially in Great Britain or America then it's it's really like a must to not have a picture mm -hmm. it's forbidden and it's like a reason to uh not not to hire you and yeah it's it's really bad there why woke culture oh god because it can discriminate and we are hiring skills not people exactly that's, that's <laughs> bullshit bullshit <laughs> when you see the person uh in interview like one week later it's not a difference but yeah, they, they they have it like this, so just be yeah. careful with that yeah. <laughs> outside of chicken. Oh, it's better it's better to not include it there at all. But you know, and funny is that on LinkedIn you can have it, right? Because there is no option yeah. to not have it. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. like that's like the thing that confuses me the most. So thanks for the answers. Yeah. Okay, guys, about LinkedIn. Who has a LinkedIn profile? Hands up or reaction up. Hmm? Okay, so who will tell us what is the Lindkin? <laughs> LinkedIn is the so, uh, social network like Facebook or other uh, things, but instead of sharing your lunch, you are sharing there your CV. I will show you LinkedIn. Is it this thing? Yeah. So this is how LinkedIn looks like. You see, the same like Facebook and or other Twitter, and this is your profile which you can have it here you know here 
pictures, some information, and uh, working experience, education, some other skills, blah, recommendations, and so on and so on and so on. So this is good things because you uh, good thing because you can have it and you can be hunted down there. So it's good to have it and it's good to have it good uh, or at least okay. So yeah, I will now show you when you will creating your profile or when you will you can improve your profile or maybe you don't need to because your profile is outstanding already. So which parts are based on my experience important? Number one most important part is this one. It's called headline. Trick in Czech, there it's written uh, when you're trying to fill it out. Uh, it's this whisper tells you its motto. And therefore you can find some people have it there. If you are the smartest person in the room, you are in the wrong room, which is a nice motto, of course, but it will not help you with nothing. Because how LinkedIn works, it link, it works that you connect with other people and making the huge network of people. Because you can reach more more connections you have, more people you can reach, more people can reach you, and so on. And everywhere, if you will list some people on the LinkedIn, this is what you will see. See name, headline, and uh, yeah, headline. That's all. That's it. So. A lot of people are using headline as their job and current company. Some to show what they can do or what they are doing, how, uh, what's their skills. You know, for example, if I can see the wrong headline is lecturer at Czech University of Life Sciences. It's a, like cool lecturer, but if I a lecturer, of what would be interesting? And she probably has it there more. Uh, here, coordinator of uh, this and this and this, copywriter, for example, this one. What you know about her? How much more? And this is what I told you, you know about this sharp and blurred. This is very blurred. Who will click there? Not, not so many people. It's also not so many people will click and have, have a look at than this. But for this, you know, a little bit of occultism, maybe some people can uh, have a look on it. So this is very important and try to, here you can make a difference if your profile is clickable or un not clickable. You know, so clickable uh, is something what has shape, what you understand for. So this is important. And then uh with your experiences it's just good to know or good to write them somehow something use uh these keywords which other can search for yeah your education then basically then not so important anything else give me a second It's one of the set, uh, setbacks of walking at home. Kids. Uh, so uh, this is how you can make your uh, make your profile clickable. This is the important here uh, because uh, it works on a keyword search. So it's good to have there more information written here because then your profile will show up when someone will search someone something, and it's. All and main goal is collect a lot of connections because more connections you will have, more people uh, you, know, you can reach and more pe people can reach you. And then, uh, as you see in my profile, there was uh, that I have 500 plus connection. And this is my recommendation to students during your studies, you should collect 500 plus connections. Because LinkedIn doesn't show if you have there for LinkedIn there is no difference for if you have five hundred one or fifteen thousand connections. Yeah. So this is somehow a definition if your profile is stronger again clickable or not because you you can see it on on the profiles. 
And so it's easy, just go through LinkedIn, click for everyone and everywhere and make your connections, collect your connections. So that's for LinkedIn. I would show you uh, how you can use it, how you can use LinkedIn for two things. First, you have there your profile, which you advertise to other people and you can be found and hunted down. Second, you can collect cool information and contacts. So let's say you search someone. I don't know, I'm searching for HR, HR directors. And I have, I'm listing many HR directors. I can also uh, check HR directors who studied our university or who worked somewhere where I want to get the information or something. Or I have a search HR directors people. For me, first degree connections. So I can go and we talked about it to uh, how cool it would be to work on airport line, right? So I have here HR director. I have here her private email. So I can write her email. Some people has their, their phone number. So if they have phone number visible here, you can call them or I can message Miss, Mrs. Dana directly. Something, something nice. If you want, uh, I will show you how it looks if you found find someone who has their full contacts. So I can just click here and his private phone number and I can call him. Some people have their their birthdays, so you can just greet, uh, tell them, hey, happy birthday to you in three months and seven days. Well, I would need something from you. And you can you can have a look on uh, on those people, so you can uh, check what they are doing, how their uh, profile is scheduled, uh, is uh, made, how what they did before, what before the position they are working now, and so on and so on and so on. So you can collect a lot of information. You can also see the other companies. If you, for example, find someone who is working in some position in Lego, you can you can see where they worked before and after. So probably they have the same line uh, for different positions. So then uh, the, they have sa same line, like one career track, but in different companies. So then you can also maybe find companies which you wouldn't think of. So this brings you a lot of benefits if you will just uh, use LinkedIn, click on it, use it, doesn't have to use it like super intensively. For me, just download the app and in the bus, just try to connect, you know, be a little bit of a F, uh, Ash Ketchum, catch them all, click, 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 and you will see uh, the, the people who will most likely, likely connect with you. If you are, if you don't have strong network, is recruiters. Find your recruiters and you can get connections. So, do you have any questions? No? Good. I have I mean, maybe one more. Uh, yes. Give it to me. <laughs> I got that you work a lot of people who are trying to get jobs and uh, is there something like some pattern or some common thing that they are like struggling with and you could just help us by sharing these? Hmm. Not really. Not really. I think everyone is quite unique. Uh, many people are just coming that they don't know what to do. That's but everyone is screwed by their own unique way. So it's very difficult to generalize. Uh, in general, make your CV good. Um, don't, don't make your CV stupid. You don't have to have a good CV. You just don't make it stupid. Don't add their stupid things like I'm a flexible person because you're probably not as flexible as you think that you are. So uh, it's about your CV. Then what else? And be active. I think this is the pattern. Many people are not active. They are sending uh, CVs and waiting for miracle to happen. But for you, it's you can 
you don't have to be worried. You can get almost any job that you will think about as a technical specialist or engineers. Okay, thanks a lot. Welcome. Any questions? If not, then good luck. In case you will have some questions, uh, I think Eva can share my uh, contact details, something you can try to write me. I'm providing service mainly for our students, but you know, we are neighbors, so come on. Uh, we can go through your CV or just, uh, I don't know, give you some tips or answer your specific questions which you didn't want to share here with others. And yeah, cross fingers for your life.